it's TK Friday, and today I'll be doing a full edit of Brown Lee Reservoir. I'll also be providing download links so you can download the image along with the PDF notes and try this edit out for yourself. I'm your host, Dave Kelly, so sit back, relax, stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. It's TK Friday again, my favorite day of the week, and I hope it is yours, too. Well, today we have this image by Steve Baggett of Brownlee Reservoir. We're going to do a full edit. I always start out here in Lightroom. I did a bit of a crop on this image, as you can see right here. So there's my crop, more of a pano style image. I really like this crop. Now, I usually try a linear profile, and I did that first on here, and I wasn't real happy with it. It was a little too dull, so I ended up using the camera landscape profile. I like that better. Clicked auto and just touched up the settings that I got here. I like to take the image pretty flat into Photoshop because I'll really do the edit in Photoshop here, but I like to get a good starting point, and this is a good starting point. As far as lens corrections, I did remove chromatic aberrations. I always check that on and enable profile corrections. I didn't do any uh, noise reduction. It's a very low ISO image, and there's just a slight amount of sharpening on it, but you'll get your image. It'll look just like this when you download it, and don't forget to download those PDF notes, which takes you through the whole editing process step by step. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, you can click on my affiliate link found in the description below this video. Just click on that link. It'll take you to the TK web store where you can purchase the TK8 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. And if you use my promo code DK15, you'll save 15% off your entire purchase. And when you do that, you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And for that, I truly thank you. Okay, I showed you my Lightroom process, and now here I am in Photoshop. I just sent the image into Photoshop, and we are ready to get underway. Are you ready? Let's get started. The first thing I want to do is save out a foreground channel, save out a sky channel, because I want to open up with my balance and contrast adjustment, but I want to do the foreground separately from the sky. So what we'll do is click this button on the combo or this button on the CX panel. I have both panels open. I always like to keep my combo panel open for my TK action so it's there all the time. Now, if you have a lot of real estate in your computer, you could set it up this way. I recently made a video showing you how to set up your Photoshop workspace to utilize the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, which I will link at the end of this video in case you haven't seen it yet. And now back to clicking this button, which lets Photoshop go ahead and find the sky for you. So I'll click it and we'll see if Photoshop can find the sky. And there, and there it is. There's the sky. Now to save that out as a channel, click this button right here on the combo panel, or you'll find it on the CX panel as well. It's just set up a little bit differently. So I'm going to call this sky, S-K-Y, and click OK. And you'll see there's that channel right there. Now if we invert that, and you can invert a selection by clicking this button right under the Save Channel button. This will invert the selection. Now it's selecting the foreground. And now we can click this button again, and I'll call this Foreground, and we'll save that out. And I'll click OK. So now we have Sky and Foreground. And now we can get started. The Foreground is already selected right here. So what I'm going to do is come up to My Channels, click on this button right here, Click on either active selection or foreground. It's the same thing. I'll click on foreground. It really doesn't matter. And now what I want to do is click on my mask calculator and X for intersect. And then we can X out of here. And now we're going to go and click the luminosity mask button. And I always like to get a midtones three luminosity mask. And the reason I go for that, it protects the shadows and highlights from clipping. And then we click equal. And now you can see we just have the foreground selected. I'll I'll put that to a color grading tool because I love the color grading tool for this first balance and contrast adjustment. Now you'll notice this color wheel here. We could color grade with this. And these buttons up here represent shadows, midtones, and highlights. And this button here represents all three at once. Okay, but usually what I like to do is start out with either shadows or midtones. I think I'll start out with shadows. 
and we see the black block right here now you can click this and drag it around to color grade i'm not going to color grade this image but a lot of times i do color grade right in this opening balance and contrast step i don't think i need it on this image so i'm not touching that but basically what i want to do is just take this shadow slider and drag it a little bit to the left the shadows darken up a bit adding more contrast and then we're going to click on midtones and i want to open up my midtones a little bit to maybe somewhere right about here I think is good and now I'm gonna click on highlights and we're gonna open up the highlights a little bit and I'm watching the snow up here I think I'll pull it back just a little bit more I'll be working on this snow later to get it a little bit brighter but we're gonna save that for later but let's check it out here is the before and here's the after so already it's looking a lot more contrasty a lot more balanced now we're going to work on the sky right now the color grading tool is in the way so if you click this x here it'll get out of your way it doesn't affect anything here and what we can do now is click on my channels again this time we want to work on the sky we have the channel saved out down here click on sky again we want the mass calculator so click on the mass calculator we want to do an intersect we want to intersect it with a midtones 3 so click this x we can x out of here now we got to get a midtones 3 so click on the luminosity mask button very simple click this number three here for the midtones and that will give us a midtones to protect shadows and highlights from clipping a midtones 3 that is and now we click equal to make a calculation hey it is a calculator we make the calculation and now we output it to a color grading tool and now we can get started here so i'm going to start with shadows again so i'm going to click on the shadow block and i'm going to start to drag this to the left and you see those clouds the shadows in the clouds start to darken up that's too much i'm going to pull it back to about here somewhere around here now let's go to midtones i think i want to pull those midtones back darken up that sky a little bit to maybe somewhere right around in here now let's click on highlights and i think i'll even pull the highlights back just a little bit just to darken up the sky again i'm trying to balance out this image and i think that looks good here's the before and here is the after so that looks pretty good now i'm noticing that this one mountain up here is getting a little bit hidden here okay so what i'm going to do is take these two layers the top layer is selected i'm going to hold my command key down and click right here and that'll select that layer or control key down and then we can click the right side of this button for group this will put these two layers into a group if you click the left side it'll put them into a black group that hides everything but i don't want to hide anything i'm going to click the right side to put it inside of a white group and basically what i want to do is just kind of paint this off up in here with black paint just to reveal this through a little bit so let's click on the black brush and i'm going to go to like 20 percent opacity i'm already there if you're not there you can just type your two key on your keyboard let me go ahead and zoom way in here so we can really see this area in here so i with a really soft edge brush at 20 percent with that black paint I just want to reveal a little bit of this mountain back in here just like this so that's one pass I'm gonna give it another pass just to let it show through just painting over it like that and so now if you look at this mask right here and you click this button right here you can see that's what I've painted on there okay and I'm just letting that reveal through there now if you click on this X here we can see what it would look like without that black paint stroke in there see how it's lighter and now it, it just shows through a little bit better now so that's all I'm doing there and now we can X out of the color grading tool if we want to go back to fit the screen we can click this button right here and now we're fitting this back to screen so so far we're off to a good start now here's my editing philosophy after I set myself up with the balance and contrast of the image now I study the image and I look at it and I let it talk to me and sometimes it speaks back and if you think it speaks back to me you're going to probably say dave you need a therapist <laughs> and you would be right but it does speak to me in its own little way but i'm looking and it's saying hey you know what some of my light areas need lightened up in here a little bit so i'm going to dodge these up and here's how i'll do it i'm going to start out by trying a zone mask so i'm going to click this button right here and I'm looking for a light area and I think something like this would represent the light areas that I want to lighten and click OK. And now we get 
over at the multi mask, we can see here's the uh, zone mask buttons, all the adjustments we can make here. And you can adjust this slider here. So I'm looking at the light areas. So, you know, you can fine tune here. You can move it to the left or move it to the right just to do some fine tuning, you know, depending what you want here. And I'm thinking maybe like right about here. And now I'm going to tighten that up. So I'm really trying to isolate these light areas. You see that? So that's isolating them pretty well. And then I'll take this slider, this brightness slider, and drag it to the right to lighten up those areas to somewhere right around there. And now I have to output this. Now I want to do some dodging here. Usually when I dodge, I like to use the left side. And that gives me a 50% gray layer. But this time I'm going to use the right side, which gives me a blank pixel layer. And you'll see why here in a minute. So I'm going to click right here. And that's going to give me a blank pixel layer. Now, you'll notice my selection indicator. I'm painting through a selection. And I'm using 20% paint here. Let me go ahead and just start painting some light right in here. See that? And it's just going to target the light areas. So I'm going to come up in here, come down in here a little bit. Just bringing up some of those light areas. Brings out some depth and dimension, as I like to call it. I love to dodge and burn. And let's see, anything in here? Okay, it's pretty good. But take your time and just really study it out. Here's the before and here's the after. Now, if it's too strong, you can always pull back on this opacity. Here's the reason I use the blank pixel there. Because right now, there's paint strokes on here. They're really hard to see. But if I command or control click right here, I'll load those up as a selection. And now what I'm going to do is click on my hue saturation adjustment layer button right here. And when I do, we can take a look here at this mask. There's my dodging right there. Okay, so now that's in a mask. So let me click this again. And now I can make a hue saturation adjustment. So basically what I want to do is just bring up that saturation. I'll start to move this to the right. And see how I can bring that saturation up in there. And I'm going to bring it up to somewhere right around here I think is good. And then we can adjust the tint. I'm going to take the tint and shift it to the left a little bit. Just a little wee bit. And a, like a minus three I think is good. And I might have too much saturation. I'm just going to pull it back a little bit to maybe like right here. 36. So here's the before. And it's minimal. Here's the before. And here is the after. But it just adds a little extra saturation there. But that's why I use the blank pixel there. Because if you command or control click it, it will load whatever you painted up as a selection. And don't forget this handy button right here, the double arrow. If you click it, whatever layer you're on, if you have a layer mask and you click this, you can see what that layer mask looks like. And click it again and you go back to the image. But that's a very helpful feature. Now as I study the image, I think I want these light areas to come up a little bit. So I'll dodge those as well. So let's try zone mask again. So let me click the zone mask button. And let's find a light area in here. You know, something like this represents those light areas. I'll click OK. And now let's make an adjustment. So I'm going to adjust this slider to the right a little bit. Okay, maybe just a little bit more. I think that's good. Now I want to tighten this up. So I'm going to tighten it up to like this. See how it really isolates those light areas in there? And now I want to brighten them up by dragging this slider to the right just to brighten them up a bit to somewhere right around there. And now I'm going to dodge again, but instead of using a blank pixel layer. I'm just going to use my gray pixel layer because I'm not going to bring the color up here because I'll bring the color up in there later, but I will not do it now. And now with the 20% brush, again, I'm just going to start to paint some lightness in some of these areas in here. Isn't that cool? Just lightens them up a little bit. Now, every time you lift your brush and paint again, you'll add another increment of lightness down. So just go along and paint through here. And, you know, I'm just going to lighten this area up in here. Maybe a little bit more over in this area here. But I just want to lighten all those areas up. So we lose contrast as we go back in here. So I'm watching myself in this area here. I don't want to do too much back in here. But I think that's good. But take your time. When I'm doing a video, you know, it's like I'm kind of rushed here, you know. I only have so much time. So sometimes I'll miss a little something. So you got to forgive me for that kind of stuff. But I think that's good enough. So let's take a look. 
Here is the before and here's the after, but I think that looks good. I'm happy with that. All right, back to studying this image. Now what's bugging me is some of the blue back here looks a little bit too blue. I'd like to tone it down. If you like the blue, don't tone it down, but I want to tone mine down. But it's, as Bob Ross used to say, it's your world. You can do whatever you want with it. So in my world, I do want to tone it down a little bit. And here's how I'll do it. Now, right now, I do have a selection, so... I got to get rid of that selection. So if you click this button on the combo panel, that'll get rid of your selection. You can see the selection indicator goes away. I'm going to get a hue sat adjustment layer, hue saturation adjustment layer. Click my target tool. And then this blue back in here, I'm just going to click right here and start to drag this to the left. You see that? It's just targeting blues. And I'm going to take it back to, yeah, like minus 33, I think is good. And I'm looking at my notes, and yes, that's right. But I don't like what happened to the lake here, so I can fix that pretty easily. And to do that, I'm going to grab the Object Selection tool. And right now, you see the little arrows here, circular arrow. If I click this, and there's an exclamation point saying, hey, you need to click this if you want me to find your objects, Dave. So I click that, and it's finding my objects for me. i got to wait to quit spinning here. And as soon as it's done spinning, I can hover over areas. And there's my lake right there. So watch. I'm going to left-click this with my mouse. And that is a selection. You see the marching ants right there? And now what I'm going to do is come over to the combo panel, and you see this red button? Click this. This opens up your fill dialog. You want to fill it with black. Now, if yours doesn't say black, this is a drop down, and you have different choices foreground color, background color, content aware, but I want black, and I'll click OK. And look, and the reason I did that was because I like the blue in the lake, but I didn't like the blue up here. Now, you can still see the marching ants, and let's click this button to get rid of the marching ants. But check it out. Here is my before, and here's my after. So now if I disable this by clicking the X here. You can see the lake just gets a little too desaturated there, but now by blocking that out of that selection, it maintains its color. Pretty cool, I think. Now I ask the image, what does it need next? And I feel it's telling me, lighten my snow up here. I think my snow needs lighter. I'm a little lackluster here and I need lightened up a bit. I got to be careful here because I got the sky here and I want the snow to go light. So I'm going to use my foreground channel. So I'm going to click on the My Channels button, click on Foreground, click on the Mask Calculator, click X to intersect, X out of here. Now I need to make a mask. So I'm going to click on the Zone Mask button and I'm going to click here in the light area and click OK. All right. And there's my selection. Pretty good. Let me see if I can fine tune this. I'm going to move this to the left a little bit. Let's tighten it up some, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's brighten it. And that's pretty good. Now, don't forget to make the calculation. So click equals and now we can see it. But you see there's a little bit of residue right in here that I got to be careful with. I'll take care of that, but not yet. I just need to output this to a dodge tool. I'm going to use 50% gray. So I'm going to click the left side of the dodge tool. And now you can see I have a selection. But remember when I told you about that little light residue in there? If we click this button on the TK8 multi mask panel, we can edit our selection. So let's click it. And now you see that right there. But there's a burn tool in here. See right here? Click on this. And it's defaulted for shadows at 50%, so it's targeting shadow areas. So I can just come over here and paint, and any shadowy area will darken up. So I can just paint that off of there, just like that, making sure I don't bleed out into the sky. And then you have to click this button to load that back up as a selection. And now I can start my dodging process. Now notice I just used the burn tool, so I have the burn tool right here. We have to switch over to a white brush. So click this button on the combo panel or the CX panel, whichever one you have opened up, but look for the white brush icon. And now at like 20% opacity and a decent sized brush here, check it out. I can lighten up my snow. So that's 50% or I'm sorry, 20% I'm lightening up the snow. I think I'll give it another pass up in here and down in here as well. Okay. So paint that all in. Let's take a look. So here is the before and here's the after. But doesn't that look better? You know what? I may go down to 10%. I'm going to type my one key and 
just paint over this one more time. Maybe again, I'll lift it and paint again. Just want it a little bit lighter. So here is the before and here's the after. And I like that. It looks like snow to me. All right, now what's next? Well, you know what? We have a mountain with a lot of texture. I want a little bit more saturation. So how about a soft pop action? I think that may be good. Now, right now I have a selection here. I'm going to go ahead and deselect that selection. And now let's click on soft pop and see what kind of result we get. Okay, that looks pretty good. Here is the before and here is the after. Now, I don't like it in the sky. So we can take care of that fairly easily by clicking this button on the combo panel. You'll find it on the CX as well. This button right here, click it and it will list any channels that you have saved down here. Now I have a foreground save, so click on that. And now that foreground mask will be added to the soft pop layer. So now here's the before and here's the after. Now, this mountain back here is a little too strong, so I want to take it off of there. So what I'm going to do is get a black brush. So click on the black brush icon. At 50% opacity, I'm typing my five key. And all I want to do is I'll make the brush fairly large here, and I just want to paint one pass over the mountain back here. I just want to take the soft pop off the mountain back in this area here. Doesn't matter if I go into the lake a little bit, that's okay. It's not gonna hurt anything. Even back in this area, right up into here. So we'll take that off of there. I have not lifted the brush, by the way. So that's taking 50% off. And if you look at my mask right here, if we click the double arrow, you can see that's where I painted, okay? So took 50% off of there. So we can take a look. Here is the before and here is the after. But you see that little pop of color and that little bit of detail. And I'm going to leave the opacity up at 100%. The next thing I want to do is bring up the weaker color saturation. So to do that, I'll use a vibrance mask. So we'll click right here. This opens up our vibrance and saturation masks. Now you'll notice I have my histogram up here. Watch what happens when I click on vibrance one. Now watch this histogram. I'm trying to get this left side to come over and touch as close to that edge as I can. So here's one, here's two, see that coming over, here's three, and here's four. So that comes over. So that's targeting like weaker color. And now all I need to do is I'll put that to a hue saturation adjustment layer. And now we can pull up our weaker colors. So I'm going to drag the saturation slider over to, let's try 50. So here is the before and here's the after. Now it's brought a whole bunch of color out here. So I'm going to work on each individual color or most of the colors in here. So we're going to come to master and we're going to go to blues and that's just going to target blue. So I'm going to pull the blues back to probably right around, let's see. Right around here, I think, is pretty good. There's some magenta back in here, so we can get rid of that. Magenta doesn't look natural in this image, so click on the magentas. And I'm going to pull this back and just get rid of those magentas. to somewhere right around here. You see how those magentas go away? Now the reds. Let's work on the reds. So let me click on reds. And let's pull those reds back a little bit to maybe somewhere right about here, just to ease back those reds. And now yellows. Let me click on yellows. And I just want to pull back in the yellows just a little bit. Right about here. So let's take a look. Here is the before. And here is the after. So it just gives me a little bit more vibrance. But I also targeted the different colors so I didn't overdo certain colors. Now I realize that's not a lot of extra saturation. But I'm mainly looking in this area because I'll be adding more later a different way. But this just, again, there's the before and the after. Builds it up in here a little bit. Now it's a little too orangish down here and a little too yellowish up here. So what I'm going to do is click on my saturation vibrance mask button again. And this time I'm going to use a saturation one mask. It's just targeting the very strong colors. And you can see the yellows are up in here. And some of those orange tones are down in here. I'm going to output this. Let's go to this hamburger menu and do saturation painting. Click right here. And what that's going to default at. Well, first it tells us warning, no pixels or more than 50%. That's okay. Click okay. 
it's going to give us a gray brush, as you can see right here, which will remove saturation. And I'm at 50% opacity. I'm going to take it to 30%. I, I'm typing my three key. And all I want to do is just paint off some of this orange saturation right here. I just think it's a little bit too strong, just in this area right here. And then up in the sky here, this yellow, I just want to tone it back a little bit. So it's just going to pull back on the saturation up here in the sky a little bit. I might hit this one more time over here. Okay, and I think that's good. It's going to be very minimal, but here is the before and here is the after. So it just tones it back just a little wee bit. Now, do you see this area? This is probably where the river is bending around here. It's a little too light and a little too yellow. So I'm going to try to target this with the zone mask. So let's click on the zone mask button and click right in here and click OK. And that makes a really good selection. I'm going to go ahead and lighten that up like so and just tighten it up a little bit to like that. And now I'm going to grab my lasso tool. I'm typing L. And I'm just going to lasso right around this selected area here, this white river right here. And click on this button here to mask the mask. Now, when you click it, this dialog comes up, feather selection. It'll feather it 115 pixels, but if you click cancel, it will not feather it. And there it is. There is that river right there. Or lake. I think it's a river. And now... I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to output this to a hue saturation adjustment layer. I want to darken this, right? So I'm going to use this lightness slider to just pull to the left to darken that to, let's try right about there. And now let's desaturate it. I'm trying to get it to look close to right here. It's probably too dark. So let me lighten it back up a little bit. And do I want to desaturate it a little? Yeah, maybe right like that. That looks a little more natural. It looks more in line with this area right here, the way the glare is hitting off the water here. So here is the before and there's the after. Two steps and we are done. Now this next step is going to be a color grading tool. So I'm going to click on this color grading tool button. Now to get it into the layer stack, you must click on the plus here. And I'm going to do a final balance and contrast. And this is a pretty interesting adjustment. I'm not going to use any mask on it because I'm being very subtle here. So I don't have to protect myself from clipping highlights or shadows because it's going to be a gentle adjustment. But it's going to be pretty amazing. And you'll see here because I'm going to add some contrast. And whenever you add contrast, you also increase saturation a little bit, which is really going to help this image out. I'll start out with the shadow block. I'm going to click on it and just drag the shadows to the left a little bit like that. You see that, but you see how that color started to pop? Next, I'll work in the midtones. I'll click in the midtones and just slightly back that to the left just a little bit. And now we're going to go to highlights and now I'll just open up the highlights just a little bit and see how that snow lightened up right in there. So check this out. Here is the before and here's the after. But look at that contrast and that extra pop of color in there, all with one little color grading adjustment. And we could color grade here if we wanted to as well. But I think I'm good. I don't think I have to mess with it. And now one final thing, and every landscape pretty much needs a vignette. And what I do here is just click on the basic vignette. The Gaussian Blur dialog comes up. I just accept the radius and click OK. And believe it or not, that's all I do. Here is the before. And here is the after. Now, I studied this out, and I tried backing off on the opacity. I tried doing some blend diff, but I ended up liking the opacity at 50%, the default opacity, so I just kept it there. I thought it looked good, but you can adjust it and change it to whatever you like. You know, we're all different, and we all like things a little bit different, so if you like it, leave it at 50%. If not, change it to what you want. But anyway, the image started out looking like this. And now it looks like this. So I'm really happy with this edit. And thank you, Steve, for letting us use your image today, letting us edit it. And don't forget to download the image in the PDF notes and try this out for yourself. Well, there it is, everyone. Another TK Friday comes to a close. Hey, if you have an image you would like me to edit on a TK Friday, just click on my contact link. You'll find it at the bottom of the description of this video. If you enjoyed today's full edit tutorial, please give this video a like and share it with your friends. 
If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Cully. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.